Radical Transformation Clinic at the IHDS April 2nd of this year. It's going to be five consecutive weeks and a foundation analysis by an International Human Design School certified analyst as well as LYD is required or the BG5 equivalents. The Radical Transformation Clinics are designed to facilitate a deep cellular process of renewal within you from the inside out. When you're taking living your design as an awakening experience, that's designed to help you with your mental processing. But sometimes, and I'll show you exactly where uh, that is relative to a person's design, sometimes we have issues based upon the fact that we are deeply conditioned from birth. I happen to be one of those people. So if you have your advanced chart, look down at your advanced chart and take a gander to see if you've got a right facing arrow. Okay, this is the first of the radical transformations. If you have a right facing arrow, you are way more sensitive to electromagnetics, to um, not eating correctly from birth, from childhood. And so what generally tends to happen is we can talk to you till the cows come home, but you may not really grasp what I'm talking about because we've got to start with the remedial work of taking care of the body first. Okay, so that's where it's really important to experiment over here first. Now, one of the things that Ra was very clear on is first, don't take anything that he said as gospel, try it and see. I'm gonna remind you that you are your own authority and that I am not the boss of you, nor am I the expert on you. I'm just an expert on the human design system. So I will do my best to read this mapping in the Emerge program, we go deep, deep, deep into these magic squares over here, okay? So that we can really take a deep look at your physiology. And then if you want to continue on in the journey, we will touch upon the personality construct. But if you're looking to make money off human design and you need support writing out your marketing, that's really what Levina is born for and good for as far as getting people's attention. If you need help crafting your mission, values, and vision statement or your materials for attracting the type of people that you were destined or born for to serve, that's the next step after that, the Awaken Entrepreneurs Program, okay? If that's something that's interesting to you. So really, I have three places where I am diving deeper into the knowledge than what I see um, people generally doing. And that is um, this Emerge side, which I'm it's a new program that nobody else is calling anything. Um, it's radical transformations on steroids, basically. And that is first, we need to make sure that it's correct for you. So following your strategy and authority and then applying it radically. Now, this does not mean to the detriment of your form. Let me tell you a little story about what happened to me and why it's so important that you do not take what I say as gospel either. Even though I may have a tendency to preach, that's what the third color tends to do. Okay, priests archetypally, let me tell you what I did and didn't do and this did not work for me and probably won't work for you too. Okay, so here's my little story. One of the first things that I wanted to know about was how do I eat correctly because I had a horrible issues with um, health and well-being and um, my weight would vacillate back and forth pretty dramatically within a month and I was dealing with undiagnosed Hashimoto's and I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis it's basically an immune system disorder and I had no idea it's genetic it's hereditary it's something that started showing up after I gave birth to my first child and when I came across human design I immediately quit everything I was doing so completely I'm not here to work quit and studied my ass off now myself and my husband we were literally broke like so broke it was it was embarrassingly broke because we quit and <laughs> we're here to study we're not here to work right so we both studied and we found an analysis or an analyst who would do our foundation analyst analysis and also give us our dietary regimen right off the bat. Now, my husband is the same color, but I'm cold and he's hot. I didn't know how to read this yet, so I couldn't wait for that date of my analysis. This was early 2013, February 1st or something like that. And I 
Couldn't wait. I thought maybe I was hot, so I ate everything hot. Within a week, by the time I got to my analysis, I was horribly sick because I was also trying to do um, the raw food diet. So raw, but heated up in a dehydration. Now this is cold thirst, by the way. <laughs> heated up in, in, and, um, in de dehydrator so that would still be technically raw but also drinking hot tea, hot, li hot liquids at the same time to rehydrate. I was, I felt like I had the flu. It was incredibly sick. So the lady gives my husband and I the same analysis basically because we're both split definition projectors with the same channel. He's hot, I'm cold. So at the end of our reading, all she said was that hydration was important to us and that I would be d drinking buckets of ice water. That's what my mind remembered, buckets of ice water. So instead of eating everything above body temperature, I started eating it below body temperature and drinking buckets of, of ice water, living up in the mountains where it snows and with an undiagnosed Hashimoto's. I really hurt myself over those next coming years because I was trying to be incredibly militant, did anything that other people said I should do, giving up my authority because I only came across human design in 2012. Okay, so I'd been in the experiment maybe six months before I started experimenting with dietary regimen. And I wanna tell you this because that's one of the dangers at the beginning of the human design experiment is that you take on what somebody else says because they know better than you and you don't listen to your authority, you don't operate your sovereignty, and instead you do yourself your physical form damage, okay? So this is the thing I wanna make sure that none of you do. Please, if you are confused or uncertain or unsure, ask me. Even if you've done this before, you've, you've gone through this before, you're here now, so if, if you're still going through some issues, please let me know, inform me, okay? I wanna make sure that no one's left behind or abandoned in this deep, profound, transformational experience. And that's one of the reasons why you're seeing me separate my work into emerge from a perspective of working with um, deeper layers and also starting at the very surface, surface, surface for radical transformation. So if you haven't taken radical transformations or you haven't finished um, or gotten really deep into your human design deconditioning experiment, then this is not the place to start. I hope I've made that really clear. <laughs> so even though I have this little slide, it's straight from my uh, training as a differentiation degree practitioner where it says apply it radically. I want you to know that you have to follow your decision-making strategy, your strategy and authority, and that's where we talk about radical as far as our nature is concerned. Now, some of this deeper stuff is incredibly mm, challenging as far as how do I make this body, this vehicle, this form, facilitate it to be at its highest functioning capacity. Some dietary regimens are incredibly strict and hard to do, okay? So there are always adjustments and nuances de depending on what's going on within the design. And that's my joy really, is to find all the little parts and pieces, all the little details and bring that up to the surface and try to find the comprehensive wholeness of what you're here to take into consideration or factor into your decision-making process. So each of you, whether you're going into the Radical Transformation Clinic for Beginners or into my Emerge program, you need to be able to apply strategy and authority in the daily routine, period. If you can't follow your strategy and authority and you're having problems, start with radical transformations first. Okay, emerge is not where you wanna go yet. If you have been experiencing the benefits of using strategy and authority as a decision-making tool, then you are in the right place. If you're sleeping alone, it's a good idea for you to at least experiment with sleeping alone and knowing that that makes a difference and how it makes a difference so that you're aware of what difference it makes because it makes a tremendous difference in some cases. <laughs> like Yoda says, you must unlearn what you have learned about good food, bad food, sleep, sleep hygiene. Did I say fluid? <laughs> I was trying to say sleep at the same time. Good food, bad food, sleep hygiene, what 
levels of exercise are right for you. In my Emerge program, we're taking small groups of people methodically through your design and looking at how you're designed to not only eat, but what you're designed to eat, which is not covered in radical transformations because it's very basic. Now the purpose for the basic radical transformations clinics, which I also include for my analysts in training, is that I give you an overview about the four transformations. It's very general information with some client specific information. And it's a teaser for the real process as far as RTC clinics are concerned. Ra would do this over two days with 16 people maximum. So what I'm going to do at the IHDS is break it out into four weeks with 16 people maximum, one, one session per week. And then the eMERGE program is the real process. So the Radical Transformation Clinics is the teaser for the real plus process. And in each of these four steps of transformation, you're going to learn about the significant differences of how each of us are designed to show up relative to your charts, especially. So I'm not going to teach you everything, but I'll focus on who's in the room as far as how to understand what we call color, tone, and just a teeny bit about base, not really um, applying it analytically, but focusing more on color and tone. Okay, color, especially in radical transformations, tone, definitely, and way even deeper when we get to the deeper levels of the design. So we're starting with your body and your being. If we don't assess and factor in, consider our body, our genetic being, our potential for our fulfillment of our physical form, if we just live up in the mind, we're doing ourselves a disservice and our mind won't function correctly. So again, remember, it's very, very important. Ra would say critical. If you've got a right facing variable arrow here, it, it's actually, some in some cases, it's even more important depending on what the design is. Like say as an example, if you're a mental projector, you really need this information to help you make decisions, period. In his advanced materials, he says that. So just like when you're a child and going to kindergarten, they teach you your basic ABCs. And as you grow older, they teach you language and context and structure and syntax and all of those things. I'm adding on pieces relative to what's important to understand about this beautiful human design system. And people say it all boils down to just strategy and authority. That's my message, strategy and authority. And it is, yet with some people, hi, I'm one of those people not being on path with how I make decisions relative to my form, I couldn't really get there, as in get to the place of deconditioning. I couldn't. Now, everybody has their own process, their own timing for this unfoldment. Please don't make it a mental decision and say, because Lavina couldn't do it and I'm right variable too, I've got to go over here. You still got to run it through your wave. You still got to process it however it is correct for you to process. Okay, so it's about your body, which this form, this vehicle, this body is the life. If you don't treat your body correctly, nothing will work correctly. Your magnetic monopole isn't able to hold your personality in context with your design and everything falls flat or doesn't align. The first step, the first transformation, the catalyst, your primary health system is about enhancing the body's innate intelligence. So if we look at this advanced chart, the body's innate intelligence not only comes from your cognitive potential and how you are taking in where you be. So being nourished on the inside, being nourished on the outside, but it's also about the resonant frequencies of these magic squares. These are uh, statements that point a finger to the physiology of the form. Very unique, very different. And in Emerge, we go deeper into not only the planetary construct, but also the positional construct of where that planet happens to be. And then we factor in how do we relate to or correlate the colors with 
the planetary imprints. And what does that mean for signposts when it comes to um, assessing or analyzing what the physical form is presenting with? Okay, so I know I'm probably speaking very, um, I'm doing the best I can to be clear. And if you're not following, probably not the, the best time to, to do this right now or to start this. If you're following, hallelujah. If you, if you are not following, do ask me questions so I can hopefully further clarify. So what PAHS stands for is the primary health system, your dietary regimen, as Ra would like to call it, or your way of taking in food. What it does is it enhances your physical forms well-being, your brain potential. Your brain is the platform of your consciousness. Now food in and of itself is our deepest and oldest conditioning from the moment of our birth. We are fed either correctly or incorrectly. By providing our form with its correct nutrition based on an individual's genetic code or imprint, blueprint, this enters us into a profound, deep process, which enhances your body and aligns it with its unique and differentiated sensory awareness. So back to my little story of what happened to me. Remember how I said I was um, radically, at first, trying the hot thing, switched to the cold thing, and it was winter. It was the middle of winter. And within a few years, I got really, really sick. In fact, that first year where I was um, trying to do the deconditioning, I was going through LID, ABC, cartography, and I was trying to adhere rigidly to my dietary regimen without trusting my authority. Um, what happened was I had meltdowns. I mean, psychological meltdowns where I thought I was going crazy. I mean, there was a lot of crying happening. What can happen if you take this step too soon is that you can accelerate your deconditioning process to the detriment of your health and well-being. This is why it's so important and critical to ensure that you are guided by a person who knows the signs and symptoms of your chart and what's going on when you can share with them your experiences. That's why for me, the way that I like to do this is a deeper, longer process so that I can guide you or hold your hand, so to speak, relative to our time together and ensure that you're not doing your body damage, that you have somebody else, an outer authority, somebody who knows the system to discuss what's going on with you so that you don't make the same mistake that I did, which is no support. I just went to classes and that's all I, you know, I had mental support with my teacher, Darshana Deborah Matthews after classes at times, I can remember getting completely like mind blown, melted and um, had a lot of psychological issues that first year that was really challenging and really um, painful and isolating at times, even though I was living and supported by um, my husband's family at the time, it was really, 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 really hard. And I don't want that for any of you to be um, lost in the confusion, the, the world of Maya without somebody, a guide to be able to light the way. Okay, so that's what this is here for, to have that deeper level of awareness in this segment, the primary health system, we explore the conditioning around diet, food, and the body. So each individual is designed to operate incredibly uniquely. And each individual has a personal process of sensory capacity. Ra would call it cognition. Okay, cognition is a big part of the story when it comes to how you're here, to attune to your form. For me, I'm feeling cognition. Feeling cognition is incredibly sensitive, psychic, and attuned to all the ways, all of the sensory capacities. Um, so it, it, it is a level of potentially at your design nature, genetic nature, you might be incredibly fragile or sensitive here. So exploring whether you're right, more sensitive than left. Left is um, the functionality of the brain and form 
cognitive intelligence, right or left, is one of the key factors that you're going to learn about when you go into this program. Because there is a dramatic difference between the left and right brain system. So this is your brain and body, brain body system. Andrea Rick Wolf just hammers that in. This is your brain body system, not just the brain, but brain and body. You can see for me, I'm passive. So it's not about having high stress relative to my brain. And it, it'll show up very differently depending on what else is underneath the surface there. So we're just, this is variable. It's just fingers pointing at the truth to help you get in alignment with your cognitive potential. Okay, if you're interested in that, I have other videos. You can search YouTube for variable, introduction to variable, and there's a full training there to help you understand it. Now, once we've gotten our dietary regimen down, and when we, when we talk about Emerge, we're gonna go specifically into what aspects of the dietary regimen um, really need to be experimented with relative to what foods you can play with and um, see which ones your body actually really enjoys. The second transformation is the cornerstone of your deconditioning process. Now, this isn't important until you're 30 or beyond. Okay, so if you're under 30, this one, don't pay attention to it. But when you're over 30, 30 and above, your primary health system environmental frequency affects your physical longevity. This nine-centered vehicle is designed to be able to live healthfully up until its early 80s, 84 or Uranian creatures. So when the form is operating correctly, then it is essential for it to operate in context with the right environment. So the path that you're walking, the experiences in your life, the people that you meet, the situations which shape your learning, and ultimately what becomes potentially your wisdom in this life. You can see in my example, here is my physical environment and both of these in undefined functions. So then we can really speak to the wisdom, the people that we encounter, situations, places, circumstances, and events. So through the transformation, the second transformation here, we attune ourselves to alignment with the path that we're walking so that we can have the correct, what Ra calls trajectory in life. So generally speaking, most 30 year olds around that time, three and a half years before, three and a half years after, because this is the Saturnian cycle, the Saturn cycle, what will happen is you get pulled out of your nest. This is the end of childhood. That's why this isn't important until 30, because your life, and its natural unfolding will start to grow from this point on. So we are children before 30. You know how Ra says, human design is for children. Anybody that's under 30 is a child. So in the deeper layers of Emerge, we explore the conditioning around your environment, observing how each individual operates through the experiences of your physical location the effects of what happens when you're in transference and the right and left impact of the design nodes and their connection with your body and your life. This is your movie. Okay. So when we're looking at an advanced chart, I want you to see that up here is the I or what you are here to be. Okay. It is what you are. Here is who you think you are and here is what the body is living in its life. We are a juxtaposition, a composite, if you will. We are not just this and that, we are something greater. So this I of what we live out as our life's work or purpose, Ra would call this the incarnation cross, meets in context the we, or what we would call the external parts of our life. So first things first, get the brain body system on track so that it can recognize where it's designed to be. So being in the right place relative to the we, as in connection with the external, being nourished from the outside in, being nourished from the inside out. Those are the 
first parts, the most important pieces of the primary health system. So that is the first two steps so that I can help you align to your path and purpose as yourself. So that's the cornerstone, your physical longevity in the physical environment. Basically what PHS on the body side does is it reduces the resistance that you physically feel. Therefore, you will live healthier for a longer period of time. Of course, some of us have a fixed fate and our path of and trajectory is written in the stars, you could say, as far as when we're going to exit. And other people have a transpersonal karma, your left angles, and you are required to fulfill your karmic um, potential with other specific others. And some of us have personal destiny like myself. Regardless, the primary health system helps you have a better experience within the places that you frequent. It's not about a specific place on earth. This is not astro cartography. This is about your attunement to the right frequencies within the environment where you already are, where you may be called to or designed to move to, if that is correct for you. So it's not about moving, it's about attuning. Now, from that place, we next go into rave psychology land. So rave psychology is over here on the right hand side where we can see the where, where of our nature personality wise. We are designed to be either rigid and limited and fixed or potentially flexible re regarding what we think of as who we think we are. But this who we think we are, which most people are usually over identified with and try to live out in the openness because of that potential awareness is not the full story, which is why making decisions that you can trust in alignment with your strategy and authority. Now, you know, it's about cognitive potential as well. That is where we're going to find everything starting to work perfectly. And whereas on the body side, we may get um, pulled off track, but once we get on track, we don't get distracted or transfer. On this side, the personality side, it will tend to get distracted and transfer, even if you're in the right place with the right people. It's just a counterpoint. It's a flip of the coin. It's a this and a that. So relative to your personality construct, the seeing here with the we, remember, and then the being or the awareness is the next step relative to your deconditioning process so that you can recognize, have a liberation of your witness consciousness, your passenger consciousness to find the fulfillment that you were born for. So in rave psychology, we dive deeper into the seeing and awareness of you as a being. So the third step of the radical transformation is making sure, ensuring that the construct, your perceptual reality is attuned to the way that you're designed to see things clearly. Because I can tell you, most people have no idea, but they're running around distracted by things that may be not important to them and not aligning them to their highest path and purpose. And this is where it gets really magical relative to your awareness, because your perception is what builds your mental processing. What you're seeing is the key to your reality. So if we go back to this, the way that I'm designed to teach you is through my personal process of awareness. Perspective is the key to our sovereignty, our reality. When we change our perspective, the reality transforms naturally. So based upon whatever your variables are, Every single one of us has an utterly unique way that we are designed to see in this life or take in the world. So through this transformation, we start to pay attention to what is absolutely critical and essential for us to be able to see or witness, to be aware of, so that we can awaken. Because without being able to see in this way, you will never have your cognitive potential. I know I'm saying ultimatums, but that's the way Ra taught. 
If you don't see it, you cannot become aware. So through this transformation, learning about what distracts us away from our unique way of seeing is the first step, the most important thing. And same thing with radical transformations, the four steps, I do one session here. With Emerge, I do two so that we can really dive into the deeper layers here so that you can explore your perspective and transference and have experiences where you're running that by me and asking or providing your perspective, your outer authority, so that you can ground this in your reality, your awareness. Because if I just tell you something and you don't actually implement it, most likely you won't have the transformation that you're looking for, that you maybe potentially desire. So we're going to observe how each of you, when you're in the class with me, are exposed to conditioning or distracted away from things that are correct for you according to your viewpoint. So this is also going into left and right, the impact of your personality nodes and their connection with the mind and the conceptualization process. I again will work with the deeper layers of the magic square when we get to the side of the work in the Emerge program, but I'm not going to um, create keynoting for you based on specifics. We're going to look at personality resonance mapping and come to an awareness about how the construct your mind works relative to your awareness, your perceptual reality, so that you can get a, a greater grasp on what you're really here to see, to witness, to watch in this life. Because that is what feeds your conceptualization process. Here's the left and right mind. So based upon whether you have a left or a right mind, your mental cognition, so remember when we looked at the body side, we had a physical brain body system, a design cognition. Here on the mental cognition side, we have something that attunes us to our awareness capacity and helps us recognize our correct mental trajectory. And that's what we'll explore when we get to the deeper layers, because that is what I want for each of you to be aware of, your correct cognitive potential. So this fourth transformation is the conception of passenger co consciousness or witness consciousness, the liberation of the passenger. In radical transformations in rave psychology, we look at motivational frequency. We look at the awakening of the passenger consciousness because without that, what's the point? Why are we here? What are we doing? You know, it's not about trying to fool ourselves. It's about liberating the mind to be able to watch and see instead of meddling. Have you noticed that your mind still wants to meddle? relative to your experiment. This is about making this radical shift that requires you to embrace yourself and love and accept yourself and your process exactly as it is. It's not about rushing, hurrying up, forcing or pushing, but it's about allowing, witnessing and watching. So this is what you do while you wait. If you ever wondered, what do I do while I wait? If you're a projector, study study about the system, study others through the system. If you're a generator, study yourself. You are all about you, who you are for yourself in this lifetime. There's nothing like human design, especially the deeper layers to help you know yourself because we are passengers in these bodies. The witness potential where the personality crystal sits is on top of the head. Our vehicles, here's the vehicle, is giving us the ride of our lives. So when this vehicle is operating in alignment, when we are aligned to how we take in correctly, how we're designed to walk this path, what we're designed to see, then we are aligned to our correct path when we're motivated to action correctly. So you can think about these as literally windows, windows of your viewpoint. And then once you're looking correctly at the right things for you to process in life, out pops your motivational frequency. So what do we conceptualize about what we are observing? 
when we have this aligned, then we're seeing clearly. It's like, imagine if you ever have your car that you don't really take very good care of. You don't wash it regularly and you live on a dirt road and you've got all this dirt and grease and bug guts all over your windows. If you never clean them off, you don't see the road clearly. And so then it almost feels like, oh, here's an example. When I don't wear my glasses, I feel like I can't think clearly because I can't see clearly. So in order to see clearly, again, this has to happen in order where we decondition and then we awaken to witnessing, watching how our motivational frequency works. What does our mind process or think about? What conclusions do we arrive at? What strategies in this case, or in the other case, what receptivities are we aware of? So through this final transformation, ultimately, we're aligning our mind to its cognitive potential, which is our utter uniqueness. And then we have something truly of value, unique to offer to others. Our differentiated outer perspective, our unique cognitive witnessing capacity to be consciousness in form, the expression of consciousness in form, informed. So in this part of the journey, we explore the motivation and transference so that you observe how your individual process works. What transforms a memory into a thought process? What transforms your potential awareness down underneath the surface of your conscious personality construct so that we can see, witness, watch, and support your motivational correctness? So all of these things that are exposed within this personality construct, you would have to spend years, my mind is saying decades, but that's probably an exaggeration, years to get this level of detail. And it's right there for anybody to print off and anybody to read. But you can't comprehend this unless you're aligned over here. Sorry, I've seen it myself. I've witnessed it. Don't try to rush. Don't force the river. Don't push have the deconditioning process first, and then we go over to the left or right expression of mind, how this contributes to our cognitive potential or our process of conceptualization. So again, the first step to be able to go through this the first time, radical transformations as a kind of like a living your design, awakening potential at the deeper layers, and then the eMERGE program takes us even deeper so that our passenger witness consciousness is awoken. Again, the Radical Transformations Clinic is going to start in April, April 2nd at the IHGS school. The four transformations plus a bonus Q&A, so five consecutive weeks in April. And your requirement is a foundation analysis or the BG5 equivalent, including LYD. So that would be BG5 Foundations 1 if you're going through that side of the programs. Right now, we're going to shift gears and go into a little bit about what to expect as you start off on this journey. And I'll give you a, a homework assignment if you're gonna continue with us. Now, one of the things that Ra says is that with the primary health system, especially, it's the most important thing, is that you don't wanna force or push or do anything that your body isn't ready for. So again, remember, this is about accepting your body and your process. Your body will scream louder and louder if you are not operating in alignment. It screams to you with pain, illness, dis-ease that turns into disease. And what Ross says about self-love, that was really one of his messages, is that the moment you can truly embrace, you truly can embrace yourself, trust yourself, love yourself, you empower your immune system. You give in it an empowerment that no medicine, no pill, no association, nothing else can do for it what your own self-love does for it. So when it comes to analyzing the deeper layers of your body graph, I absolutely must have accurate birth time in order for us to work with your 
design. So I won't accept anybody who whose birth time is uncertain or unsure. If you need to, you can get a rectification. Rectifications can be done by any Vedic astrologer. The one that I've used in the past is Robert Koch, so K-O-C-H dot com. And he usually has a waiting list, so he might have somebody else to refer you to if he's not able to get you, to you right away. So my homework assignment then for you, if you're going to continue on in the journey, is the first and most important thing is to write down your problems or your symptoms before you begin this experiment. I really wish I had had the benefit of doing this before I started experimenting myself. The fine tunings that you'll find relative to what your body is going to experience is you get way more picky with how you take in food and what you take into your body. You feel more protected because you are way more discerning. Now you also might eat less or you might eat more. It's not about good food, bad food, right food, wrong food. However, there are genetic requirements within your design specific genetic needs relative to your body's innate potential fuels. So that might be something that you notice um, that you naturally gravitate towards. I will offer recommendations based on what your human design shows. And then of course you experiment and see whether or not you have improved digestion. Your decision-making ability gets more finely tuned or honed. You may have more energy or feel much calmer. Across the board, I've noticed my students and myself, your sensory capacity is incredibly enhanced. Now, there are pluses and minuses to that. If your sound um, attunement gets more picky, you may not feel as comfortable living next to, let's say, um, the railroad tracks in a narrow valley if that's not correct for you to be attuned to, as an example. So this can have incredible impact on your life. That's why we say, hey, make sure you do this when you're ready for it, according to what your body is responding to or is um, prepared for. Your emotional wave may feel different. For me, I used to be way more dramatic on the wave and way more extreme and way more volatile. Over the years in the deconditioning process, my wave has settled down. And in fact, it's gotten to where I can get even higher and even lower, but that lower comes with a sweetness. Lower is not pain. There is this sweet release or this fulfilling, like say cathartic cry. I can go um, from one place to the next in the flash of an eye now. Whereas before I would get stuck in low lows and maybe for months on end with really um, disturbed sleep and not enough energy. Whereas now I don't stay in the low, but I might get to that low and then the wave moves and it doesn't feel um, stagnant like it used to. My wave feels different. Your body tunes itself, or we could call it healing itself, differently. So this means you also may show up with differentiated illnesses, meaning because your body, now this is over years, but Ra uh, speaks to the nature of how your body being um, different rather than being homogenized, rather than taking all the same medicines and being diagnosed with all the same illnesses, now you show up differently. So your body just starts to do things differently. You might not notice that your patterns change, your sleep is deeper, less disturbed, and you'll feel comfortable in your skin, more comfortable. Body more relaxed, tuned into your natural frequency. It can literally reshape your body. Now this is not about finding the idealized, you know, stick thin or super fit or whatever you think your idealized homogenized body form shape should be but this is about getting comfortable in your body. And what happens is your body 
naturally does something correctly without you trying to change it back and that is really cool another thing i've noticed is serendipity abounds where i might be um, just my body feels like it doesn't want to do whatever it is my mind thinks I should do and when I settle into that and just allow it shows me that if I had followed my mind I would have wasted incredible amounts of time and energy where my body just knew I didn't have to do that thing and so it was just like okay well let it go and so that leads you to feel more comfortable in your skin because your body your mind is not driving your body crazy by getting things amped up and thinking that you have to make things happen and so there's there's all these different enhancements that can happen and if you don't write down your problems or, or symptoms before beginning your PHS you may not um, recognize the difference after the fact or it's a good way of keeping in touch with the things that change for you relative to your health so one of the things that we talk about relative to the enhancement of your physical potential is life is all about digestion. Ra's term for this was determination. How are you determined to take life in? So besides conditions and circumstances of how you take life in, we are also experimenting with what you take in. Now, if you listen to some of Ra's older work in places, he'll say, you know, I could take in anything. I could eat roadkill and I'm still, you know, I'm healthier, whatever the case may be. For some people, roadkill is actually much healthier than the things that you find in the grocery store. Okay, so you might get less picky with what you eat as well. Your recognition of the potential enhancements has to do with your mind being more free to step back and witness and watch rather than meddling with what the body is experiencing and judging and negating and hating on and shaming what the body shows up like. Oh, the body needs to, you know, lay in bed today instead of thinking, what's wrong with me? Why, why is this blah, 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 and then railing against your fate, or this is my personal example anyway. I'm like, oh, goody, flip it as a, per as a perspective. And I get to do this now, you know? So instead of getting rigid and inflexible with trying to achieve something, I can go with the flow with my own physical patterns, my own physical um, need for supporting my well-being, not what my mind thinks I should do. And that's really supportive and helpful relative to this body. So another thing that we want to talk about is some terminology, just so you're aware of language when I talk to you about such things next week. Determination is your genetic predisposition to form differentiation. Okay, so that's the way that Ra describes it. Determination or your unique differentiated sensory capacity is designed to be your way. However it is your way that you take in life. Okay, so we're talking about the sun earth on um, the first transformation. What happens when you are not deconditioned, when you are not operating in alignment? You have determination transference on the body side. This is a conditioned predisposition to form homogenization. Notice the difference. Form homogenization is what happens when you're transferred. The internal determination is your predisposition that drives your differentiated brain function. So your unique cognitive sensory capacity is the first step that I'll take you through. And it's the thing that we're going to experiment with for the rest of our lives. I'll tell you from experience, sometimes it is correct to go off one's dietary regimen. You let your body inform you that that is what you need. So as an example, when I got COVID in 2012, 
2020, early 2020. It was so bad, my husband had to go to the hospital. He thought he was dying. It felt like a heart attack to him where he literally couldn't breathe when he was laying down. They did all the scans and everything, sent him home. Um, and I got it and so did my daughter. So what I noticed, and because I was dealing with undiagnosed Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a immune system disorder, um, I got long COVID and it took me a really long time to get better. And because mine is, if you re recall from the beginning of our conversation, mine is cold thirst. What my body told me when I put in anything that wasn't warm into my body, it gave me chest pains for months and months and months. So if I was still in that undeconditioned, I must do things according to my, you know, uh, dietary regimen, cold, meaning colder than body temperature, not cold as in frigid out of the freezer or fridge cold, but colder than body temperature. If I'd have imprinted my mind to force my body to do that, I would have been doing my body a disservice because my body told me that it was too cold, that I needed warm liquids, that I needed warm foods. So always your body is going to tell you what is correct for you. You experience pain, you experience problem with the body. The body runs the show. This body, this vehicle is way more important. The form imprints dominate. Okay, the form imprint dominates. We are a juxtaposition of personality and design. We have a wholeness of our strategy and authority that is derived from the imprinting. But you really have to pay attention to what is correct for you relative to what the form dictates instead of the witness trying to rationalize or give up reasons and whys and wherefores as far as, well, so-and-so said that this is healthy.